Shalom and welcome to my moment of Torah. In this week's Torah reading, Bo, the Israelites get ready to leave Egypt. Following the plague of darkness, they were instructed to prepare a meal, beginning with a lamb or a kid, a baby goat. And you will roast it over a fire and eat it along with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. These are the three things that our great sage, Robin Gamliel, said are the three things one must mention at the Passover Seder in order for the Seder to be valid. Now, because nothing from the meal may be left over until the morning, that any leftovers have to be burned up, the people are also told that if the lamb they choose is too large for their family, they are to invite another to share it. In many respects, this is the first step towards a new creation story, the one of the Jewish people. Now the Israelites are about to be redeemed from slavery and brought to freedom in the wilderness. It's a freedom which allows them to begin to create their own destiny. Eating a communal meal together is a wonderful way to begin to create the camaraderie and community that will be essential moving forward. I grew up learning that the reason we ate maror, bitter herbs, at the Seder was because the Egyptians made our lives bitter with difficult labor, and that the matzah, the unleavened bread, was because the Israelites had to leave in a hurry and didn't have time to let the dough rise. And that's kind of true. But as I read the text, I saw that God was commanding the Israelites to eat this bread as part of their meal, but without giving a reason. That comes later. In quoting a Midrashic work called the Mechilta de Rabbi Ishmael, Rashi, our great medieval commentator, says, Rabbi Josiah said, do not read the verse, Exodus 12, 17, as Ushamar 10 et ha matzot, meaning you shall watch over the matzot, but as Ushamar 10 et ha mitzvot, you shall watch over the commandments. Without vowels, those two words are spelled the same way. Now, even without yeast, flour and water, if they're left long enough, will become leavened. In the same way, if we wait too long to perform a mitzvah, we might not get around to it. The commandment itself becomes leavened, leading Rabbi Josiah to say, if a commandment comes to your hand, perform it immediately. Whether we translate the word mitzvah as commandment or good deed, sometimes we wait too long before we get around to it. We're human. We wait too long to make a phone call, take care of a medical problem, take a trip or learn a new skill. At any age, but especially as we get older, that waiting takes up a larger percentage of our time. Perhaps leavening fits with the adage that tasks expand to fill the time available. As Psalm 90 says, teach us to number our days that we may attain a heart of wisdom. May we all be blessed to take this to heart. Shabbat Shalom.